Today, complex roots made easy. Here's a very typical exam question. Easy marks if you remember a few things. Firstly, don't even think about trying to factor this like you would a quadratic. That's going to get you nowhere. The way to solve these is to think of a polar bear. In fact, think of a lot of polar bears. Because what we're going to do is convert this complex number, 1 plus i, into polar form. Now, if you don't know how to convert into polar form, then you should stop this video and go off and watch another video, because you really need to be able to do that for this sort of question. So let's go ahead and express 1 plus i as the square root of 2 times e to the power of i pi divided by 4. That gives us the first line in the solution. Next, um, with any number we can always multiply it by 1. And so that's what I'm going to do is that my next step. Uh, but instead of 1, I'm going to use a complex number form and, and multiply what I've got by e to the i 2 pi k, where k is any integer. Because we know that e to the i 2 pi or 4 pi or 6 pi or negative 2 pi, all of those are just equal to 1. So I'm perfectly entitled to multiply what I've got by e to the i 2 pi k. Next I take the square root of 2 out the front and I've now got two powers of e so I can add the powers and I get square root of 2 e to the i 2 pi k plus i pi on 4. Now often people will skip this step and just go from this step to this step and that's perfectly fine. And now we can just simplify the power of e slightly and so we get the square root of 2 times e to the i pi 8k plus 1 divided by 4. Okay, so let's take the square root of both sides and we get w is equal to 2 to the power of 1 tenth e to the i pi times 8k plus 1 divided by this time 20. Now normally we can't stop there, um, so let's have a think about this. This is for any integer k, so if I put in, there's an infinite number of k's, and so there's an infinite number of values that we could get for w it would seem, but if we actually put down here a few values of k, and I've also put um, w, although I've, I've left out the 2 to the 10th because that'll just uh, make the, uh, the numbers too busy. And if you look at these powers of e that we have for the various values of k equals minus 3 to 3, well, let's look at this one. You can see here that negative pi times 23 on 20 is actually the same as this one, pi times 17 on 20. They're exactly the same. And similarly, these two are the same. Now, in high school, you wouldn't ever write an answer to saying x equals 2 thirds, comma, 4 sixths, because they're both the same thing. And similarly here, we're not going to write down the same complex number twice. So the question is, how do we work out which ones of these to pick and which ones to ignore? So invariably your examiner will expect you to pick the angles centered around zero. So by that I mean, let's imagine here, the, we'll use the Earth North Pole up the top, and here's the normal zero term that we would have, zero angle. So here's the polar bear, and he starts around here at just past negative pi, so greater than negative pi. He goes through negative pi on 2, through 0, through pi on 2, and he ends up at pi, including the point pi. So that way we've got every angle that we could possibly need, and there's no duplication. So sometimes you see this sort of statement, that the argument of W where we use a capital A, is in the interval negative pi to pi. The angle of W, if you like, under this system, uh, has to be between negative pi and pi, and the curly bracket, or the curved bracket, means that we don't include negative pi. The square bracket means that we do include pi. So now let's go back and look at all these um, possible values of W that we've got. Um, so 
our convention that we've just discussed tells us that we need to ignore minus 3 and get rid of 3, and we're left with the middle 5 on the screen. So now we're in a position where we can put back the 2 to the power of 1 tenth and write out the final answer is, and you can see there, the 5 complex numbers that are the solution to the problem. So that's it for Complex Roots Made Easy. I hope you found it useful.